Hello and welcome to Too Fast, Too Forever. There's all kinds of family. We chose this one. This is episode 257, The Fast and the Furious, lap 12. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe Too. And this episode's brought to you by Diesel Family Logistics, LLC. Safe auto shipping guaranteed. Diesel Family Logistics, LLC connects automotive dealers, auctions, commercial clients, and car owners nationwide. Shout out to Diesel Family Logistics, LLC. Well, shout out to Diesel Family Logistics and also shout out to our Patreon supporters. I'm trying to figure out, Joe, this new lap, we got a new format. I think you we don't really mix have it an up. intro. You should put it somewhere wherever you feel. Just like mix I was it up every time. about doing, well, I, okay, so I think the normal episodes I could do it at the top because it's going to end with a certain name that I'm going to have to say it anyway. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, yeah. But I was also thinking about just like being like, uh, so, you know, uh, you know what I really love about the Riddick movies is Jason Rainey on Patreon. It's like, wait, what? That doesn't that's make any amazing. sense. That's amazing. Yeah, no, that's. I, I do, like, it should just be, like, an interlude. Like, you should cut one version of it and just, like, stick it in the middle of the conversation somewhere. Like, it's, like, an actual ad. Well, I also thought about, you know, Wes is like, I, I think I'm going to like the new format, but I don't like that. Or, you know, I'm, I'm sort of sad that I'm not going to hear the transition music because I think he wrote the transition music. He did, he did. Yeah, I was I'm also thinking too. that we could, we could do that as, like, the outro for the Patreon episodes. I don't know. But I was also thinking about, like, we could do, like, a four-minute intro and just do this. But, like, that kind of defeats the point of what we're doing. But anyway. Exactly. Yeah. For this episode, shout out to Cassie Wilson, Ben Milliman, Nick Burris, Alex Ellen, and Justin Kleiman, Brian Rodriguez of High School Slumber Party, Haley Gerbys, Wes Hampton, Jerry Robinson, Dan the Duke, Hayden, Renato Donato, Michael McGann, Lane Middleton, Lindsay Lewandowski, Nate Milton of the Kings of Sport, Jason Rainey, aforementioned, our brand new patron, Tom Price. That's all the information I have about that, Joe. We'll talk about that in a couple of weeks, I guess, okay. if you know more. Okay. And Jessica Collins, a.k.a. Montez. Tez. Thank you all for supporting us at the $5 a month level or above. And thank you to Ms. Montez for joining us here this evening. Hello, Montez. How's it going, guys? I'm here in my wife beater. I've got my glow sticks. Nice. I'm, I'm, I got my shades. I'm ready to talk about this. Were you a raver back in the day, Montez? You know, um, much like my life now, I didn't leave the house much. Okay. So That's I, was a I was a pretend raver. I had fuzzy zebra pants. Oh, fun. I had glow sticks. Still have glow sticks. They're somewhere in this house. I feel like I have a pretty good sense of Montez, and I, I that kind of question could really have gone either way. Same. Like, <laughs> everything about curious. her shouts, no, never, not at all. But also some of her just like, yeah, yeah, you know, I, a couple years, right? So yeah. I don't know. But what I'm excited about is we can do our every question or every episode questions now because we used to do all these questions, Montez, as you would remember when we'd have new guests on, we'd ask them like a million questions about the Fast and Furious. After you stop listening, we're like, this is too much. There's too many questions. It, it just slows everything down. But when we have a ride along guest all lap long, we can ask you these questions. There's only a couple questions each episode. So we're going to learn a little bit more about you each episode. Are you ready for some very hard hitting either or questions? Here we go. This first one, it's a little bit like, I, I don't want to pre-answer the question, but you're on this lap because you are the most Dominic Toretto person we know, but are you more of a Brian or a Dom? I'm a Dom. I think that's right. I think that's true. I think the, the, the you as Dom on this lap is kind of a joke, but I also think that like you are more of a Dom than a Brian. <laughs> yeah. Are you more of a Mia or a Letty? Uh, that was a tough one. I'm pretty sure. you are a badass, but yeah. you're also a homemaker. I, but Mia's say. both, so I don't know. Oh, this could go man. either way. Okay, if I'm going based off of the OG film, I'm definitely a Luddy. With confidence, too. I like the delivery. It was good. Well, that's what it has to be. Yeah, if, exactly. you, if you don't say it with the confidence, you're not a Luddy. Yeah, maybe a Luddy? Uh, no. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but the most important question, Montez, it is referenced in this. You know about this. I think you referenced it on the tune-up. In this movie, as you've heard, Vince gives the name of the Cuban restaurant Cha-Cha-Cha to Mia to to get him to give her the answer. Mia describes it as the restaurant that has food all over the place. So Montez, if at the end of the lab we're like, thank you so much for being such a great guest. We don't take you out to dinner. It's got the red candles, the wood tables, the picadillo, the food all over the place. What are you picturing? What's in your head? What's in your mind's eye when you hear the phrase food all over the place? Honestly, it's Chips, tacos, margaritas, Coronas. 
Okay. So just like a Mexican restaurant. Pretty yeah, much. Hey, hey, unless, unless there's, you know, of course, maybe we're hanging out in a backyard and there's fried chicken and, of course, Coronas. Backyard fried chicken and Coronas. Okay. <laughs> I'm also getting over the stomach flu, so any of this sounds delicious to me. Okay. Oh, good, so good, you've good. not really eaten in a while. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I'm sorry to hear that you've been sick, but I'm glad that you're on the mend. Yeah. Thank you. To join us here this evening. So now this is a movie you had seen before, correct? I'm going to ask you this until the answer is no, but you've seen this one before, correct? Yes. What did you think of it this time? As you as you saw earlier today while I was texting you while I was watching this, I, I couldn't stop laughing. Oh, Joe, I got to send you a video, but yes, keep, keep going, Montez. It's so funny to watch this now in a in a serious way as opposed to as opposed to when I originally watched it, which was in a serious way, and I thought, you know, this movie's so cool, the graphics are amazing, I can't believe they're out here boosting DVD players. Now I'm like, they're out here boosting DVD players. These yep. graphics are ridiculous. Yep. The racing is so silly. The dialogue is hilarious. And I have watched the movie Cars so many times that the two of them are like mirrors of each other at certain points, and I was just laughing hysterically. Well, you were saying that Brian is Lightning McQueen. Yeah. Can you please elaborate on that? So, in Cars, at the very beginning of the movie, Lightning McQueen is literally sitting there. He's talking to himself. I would say in his car, but he is the car. He's, you know, giving himself a pep talk. And then in this movie, right before Brian's first race, he just seriously is sitting there and he goes, you're going to win this. <laughs> This is an amazing comparison that I never thought we would get to. And we literally covered cars. Yeah. He says, you're going to win this. And then yep. he says, I'm going to win this. It's like, yeah. who are you? So you're second person, then first person. Got yeah. It. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, yep. Lightning McQueen gives himself the same same race. Uh, the same uh, speech before his race. Um, he also blows a tire right before the end. Yeah. Brian's car literally, legitimately blows up right before the end. It all tracks. It all tracks. Did you like it this time? Did you like it more than you had in the past? Did you like it less than you had in the past? Does it make you any more or less worried or excited for the rest of this lap? Uh, it makes me excited for the rest of the lap. I don't like it any more or less. I like it the same. Well, that's, that's important. Now, if you liked it less, we might be off to a bad start. But yeah. the fact that you still you know, like it and you yeah. still find joy in it is a good thing. Yeah, I'm excited. So now, Montez, the thing that we're doing all lap to kick off the conversation each week in both the Fast and Furious movies and our pit stops, because this is the Dominic Toretto Vin Diesel lap, we are going to the most Dom moment. So what moment, what action, what scene, what whatever in this movie most embodies Dominic oh. Toretto? It doesn't have to be a thing Dom does, because the Dom in this movie is not the Dom that you'll see in Fast Five or in F9. Like The Dom evolves, right? He, he's a different character by the end than he is in the beginning. He's still at his core, Dominic Toretto here, but what in this movie, and we'll go to Joe first because I want to give you a little bit of time because I don't think we told you this thing. We're going to, oh man, no, I did, I did warn you about this in the tune up, but Joe, please hit us because I have so many options. There's so many options. Um, I actually like kind of forgot until right now, but the one that sticks out in my mind right now is when they're both working on the car. And he just, like, looks at Brian and goes, you break your heart, I'll break your neck. I wrote that down. I think that that just, like, sums up everything about Dom in just, like, a very succinct package. It's, like, threatening, but also not. And it's, like, protective. It's familial. It's just, like, everything encompassed into one little tidbit. And I really like that one. So now, as I'm thinking about it right now, I think I'm going to go with that one. A lot of the ones that I wrote down are Dom being protective of other people in his yes, family. Yes, yeah, So I think exactly. it's right in line. Yeah, that's, what, that's how I'm feeling too. Montez, is there something, is there a moment or an action in this movie that stands out to you as the most Dom moment of the movie? I find Dom to be a little more carefree in this movie than in other movies. Okay. More carefree. Like, okay. Yeah, I feel like, you know, he's still like, he's still young. He's got his whole life ahead of him. And I feel like my... I don't know. Maybe it's just my favorite Dom moment is when he tells Brian, you never had me. Like the confidence, the exuding confidence really yeah. hits with that one. Yeah. And I, he's like laughing when he says it. 
it's like smug yeah be- and confident yeah i can see that that's that's yeah. a good one too it's a different direction than i think joey and i were going or at least i was going but it also is just the other the other arm of of the dom because i think yeah. there's another part of it where it's like what in this movie when you think of dom in the matrix sense the residual self-image like when you think of dom in the first movie like what do you think of it it might be that scene right it might be the whole you never you thought you had me you never had me you never yeah. had your car you almost yet. had me you never had me yeah, yeah. so this is not my answer, but I wrote down one that was not a Dom moment. The only one that I wrote down that's not a Dominic Toretto moment and not one of his actions was Brian defending Mia's honor in the police house. I would get off to her pictures too. Yeah, and he yes. like goes swings at her. What I what I what I like about that is that that cop comes after Brian and he like you know goes after him and then like he gets the fight gets broken up. But the way that it gets broken up, then Bilkins pushes that cop to the ground. And I was like, oh, like Bilkins is not like necessarily you know trying to push that guy to the ground, but just the way that either He's it in the looks mix. or shot or whatever. Yeah, I also think you know as we're as we're covering too fast in the minute, it's funny to me. How Bilkins goes from being the guy who like hates Brian kind of, and like Tanner's like his his like coach here. Yes. In the second movie, we've got Markham who hates Brian, and Bilkins is kind of his coach, right? So like it's a nice kind of parallel inverse flip there. I think much like the movies, even I think we kind of saw it when Heather was with us that like Brian grows on you, even if you don't like him, right? Like like Paul Walker's so handsome and charming that like eventually he's gonna wear you down. Sure. So I think I that's agree. probably what happened with Bilkins, right? Like, he was just like, like, look at this smug little fuck that's like a new cop, and like, he thinks he's such hot shit, and then eventually he's like, eh, you know, he's like a bad guy in a good guy way, that he like lets Dom get away and stuff like that, so he's like, yeah, he probably has like some some kind of internal goodness, right? Yeah, I agree. The the other moments that I did not pick as my main one is when he breaks up the Brian and Vince fight at Toretto's Market and Cafe. I think that's a very Dom particular family moment. Yes. Uh, him pulling the shotgun on Brian in the he moans like a cop scene, I think is pretty like, hey, you need this. You need to answer for yourself right now. I need to know what's going on right now. You know what other one I liked a lot is um, my secondary option was going to be when it's a combination of him inviting Brian to the barbecue and also like welcoming Vince to try to kind of bring them together to at the barbecue. Hmm. Because the one that the one that I actually wound up picking is similar to that. The one I wound up picking is him inviting Brian into the party. Okay. Okay, yeah, like at the taxi cab part, not yes. the barbecue. Okay. I think that the party thing is kinda like, oh, this is it's good. And it definitely is welcoming and familial. But that's kind of like a a happenstance. The like, you know, like if you were like, oh, I'm going to this party, you wind up in a cab with someone, you're like, hey, you want to stop in for a minute? I got beers in the house. Well, I think it's I think it's partly like what the way that I see it is that he's rationalizing. He's trying to weigh the pros and cons of like, I don't know who this guy is. He's kind of hitting on my sister. I know that my friends don't necessarily like him, but like he did a good thing for me. I gotta let him in. Like it's it's him opening his heart, yeah. and I think it's that rationalization of like extending the olive of the family branch or whatever the same way that like at the end when he's trying to rationalize brian saying i'm a cop and whatever and like knowing he has to help vince is that kind of like what do i do in the situation like i gotta protect my family i gotta care about the people who do right by me and so on and so forth right so i absolutely agree but then i think that like you know the invitation to the barbecue is like this is like unprompted this is this is more of a an actual invitation to join Mm -hmm. so yes i i can see both for sure. And the other great moments I have is telling Brian the Kenny Linder story and then also standing up for Jesse when Tran comes after him at Race Wars. Uh, just again, you know, sort of more intimate or more protective Dom moments. Yeah, those are all good. The top tier down the line. I agree. So, Montez, the floor is now yours. Favorite moments, favorite lines, favorite characters, questions you have. Hit us with it. Where do you want to start? The Fast and the Furious from 2001. There's just so many things because I have so many questions now. That I'm going to be watching them all again. Okay. And okay, I'm going to be watching ask. them seriously. What the hell is going to happen with the cafe? Is that just a first movie thing? Do you want answers to these or no, do you no, want no. to be these, surprised? Yeah, I want to be surprised. These are okay, like the okay. questions I have watching this. Like, Okay, cool. What, yeah, just like, shoot them. Like, what is, ha- what is happening with this? I just want to know, you know, again, these are rhetorical questions. How do we go from boosting DVD players to space? That we'll get to for sure. Like, how do we get there? I will say it's a gradual ramp up and then an extreme ramp up Perfect. that both each of those makes sense and neither of them really make sense. Perfect. True. 
I mean, this is kind of like, to me, this is feeling more and more like a, it's like a soap opera. You know? Oh, of course, one hundred percent. That's a very that's a very astute thing to note. I mean, you've seen a bunch of them, but like to, yeah. to to bring that up to know that now. Yeah. You know, if you're if you're on board with that, you're gonna love it. Yeah, I think that's why I wasn't on board before, and then of course listening to this wonderful podcast, that's what changed Thank my you. mind. Is because I'm like, oh well, shit, it's literally just a soap opera. Now I can get on board because soap operas are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and and we always say like. You know, I watch a ton of sports. Sports is just any reality TV show that's just geared towards boys. It's right? unscripted reality for boys. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. Like, there's no difference between diva players in the NFL and the Kardashians. And sometimes those things overlap, too. So it's it just like, it's fully the exact same thing. That's why I get it. And I love trash TV and I love sports. It, if you follow the storylines, it's all the same shit. Perfect, because I don't watch sports. <laughs> uh, what I am excited about is I'm excited to see the um, the score and the soundtrack change over time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, because, it does. Did you like it in this movie? I mean, I'm sure that early thousands me did, but this time I just was like, I'd rather be watching The Matrix right mm. now. This, okay. That's funny you bring this up because this time a, a thought that I had watching it was I cannot believe how much electronic music is in this soundtrack yeah like i i mean you know we've watched this movie hundreds of times 11 times 12 times for this alone but watching it this time i was like there's so much fucking electronic music in it and like it definitely evolves to where it's there's really like no electronic music anymore right joey it's like more pop and hip-hop yeah, I think I mean there's there's uh you know DJ Idris Elba doing his stuff, but that's more hip hop than electronic. Right, like, this I is, think so. It's definitely capturing a spirit and a vibe as opposed to like the Latin global hip hop dance whatever. It, yeah, because like this is like firmly like dance music, right? There's literally a rave in this movie. There's literally a rave in this movie, and it's something that we don't see again. Like, and we'll have other parties and events and things that they go to, but it's definitely not the same vibe as like an underground rave anymore. And that's weird for me to think about. Yeah, the the whole early thousands vibe for me was, I just found it very hysterical, especially. Um, so we covered on the last episode that I live in a place that wishes it was the deep south and during the time that this movie came out souped up cars became like a really big deal here and like parking in parking lots that a lot of people drove past became yeah. a really big deal and like, like car meetups yeah and like driving really slow down like the main strip of the the town or whatever was like the thing you did on a friday mm -hmm. i always thought that shit was so stupid <laughs> I mean, I love cars, but I always thought that was so stupid. Yeah, I guess it's cool to observe from afar, but then when you're up close, it's just like, oh, all right. Yeah. I mean, mm. maybe I'm just old now, and I think it's silly, but I no, never, thought, I I never it thought it was cool back then either. You know, it's it's like a, it's a, a thing that you have to be in, right? Like, you were just saying you don't watch sports. Like, if, if you liked it, you'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm in this. But if yeah. not, then you're just like, it's silly from afar, always. I'm excited to keep watching them. I'm excited to see the cars change because I really am a cars person. So I am very excited to see the transition from these 20-year-old cars to now. Sometimes they have cars from the future and sometimes they don't, but we'll get there eventually. <laughs> you know, one thing, one thing in that sort of like evolution that I thought is that in this movie, when they go to that party and Brian is just like, I don't know if I fit in here. I'm looking around. You know, Vince is on the Zach Wilde guitar, blah, blah, blah. People are staring at me. And he looks at the table and he sees a pistol. And the way the movie frames it, and I think understandably so, it's just like, oh, this is like, these are some bad dudes. Like, this is a kind of rough crowd that he might not, he maybe shouldn't be there. And then you go forward and like in a movie where they're like, they're, they go against a tank. Like Montez says, they go to outer space. There's the Nas powered harpoon gun. Like to just have a pistol around, just like, yeah, who gives a shit? But like in this movie, <laughs> seeing a single gun, not even in somebody's hand, it's just like, oh no, like where, where am I? <laughs> Joey, I would argue that one pistol sitting in a in a room in a party is more threatening 
than all the other things you listed. Well, yeah, it's like a million deaths is a, tra- is a statistic, one death is a tragedy, right? It's just like, yeah. oh, you can have like an army and like, all right, yeah, fine, whatever. But it's just like one dude with a gun, just like, oh no. But yes, I just th- I thought it was funny just thinking you're right, about like, though. yeah, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you're like, what, what, like, what's one pistol gonna do when like you know? Then they all have assault rifles and fucking. Right. bionic guns. I mean, whatever. there are there are you know assault rifles in this movie too, but just that one pistol is just like, oh my god. Yeah, I have a question for Montez. All right. Joey sent me the video. I watched it without audio. I want to know what uh, Little Man thought of the movie. Oh, so both Little Men were super into the movie. I have another video that I'll send to you guys. Okay. But the littlest man was into it. He was just staring at the TV. Um, Kiernan was super into it. Jesse crashed, or somebody crashed, and Kiernan all of a sudden just goes, ooh! Oh, like he felt bad? Yeah. <laughs> he ran into the other room and goes to my husband. He goes, Daddy, he just crashed. Somebody needs to help him. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, okay. Uh, my husband started quoting the movie, which, like, blew my mind. Uh, biggest naysayer in this house was quoting the film. Everybody was watching it. It was like a family affair. It was a uh, it was a, a real uh, hallmark moment here. So, my man, my little man was into it. I think he's going to be uh he's going to be along for the lap. That's so awesome. Okay, good news. And as you know, like these movies never get too bad for children, right? We get one fuck, we get there's no nudity. So like I don't think it's the worst. I, I movie do think. You could sh- I think. I think in a way, this is the worst of the bunch to show him, though. Probably. I mean, well, that's that's a very American take because they get way well, more violent. I mean, the Edwin thing, where like Edwin's like "fuck you," then and like you know him grabbing her boob and like all of like there's sure. a lot here that's like it's 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 not it's it's a little rough around the edges, right? I feel yeah. like the very beginning is like it's pretty rough. He wasn't here for that. He was here for the just the racing. So like he wasn't even in the house. When I started watching it, then I had to go get him, and then I started it back up because, like, I'm like, oh god, I gotta watch this movie. So, you know, gotta get it in somehow. No, that and that makes sense. That was a good play. It actually turned out pretty well. I think that that works out well. Yeah. So, I'm excited to see what he thinks about the rest of them. I'll be sure to give you his hot takes. Uh, oh, as I'm we gonna continue. ask every time. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Do every you think, time. Like, are there movies that he doesn't like? Um. Oh, good question, Joey. Like, I mean, like, of a certain kind, like, I can see, like, if you show him, like, you know, like, a relationship drama, he might be like, Mom, there's no no cars or whatever. (laughs) Historical (laughs) documentaries. But, like, if you show him, like, an animated movie or an action movie or anything like that, that, you know, he is sort of geared for him, is is there anything, is he discerning to the point where he's just like, I don't like this? Or, like, I'm sure he has his favorites, like, cars, but, like, is he just like, Mom, I don't want this? Yeah, his, uh, if he doesn't want to watch something, he'll just be like, he'll be like, no... His new thing is, no, that's not good. Oh, okay. okay. Cool. So, so he's, he's related to Joey somehow. Yeah, but I have, a t- I have a TV in my office. So he'll just, if we're watching something in the living room, he'll just be like, I want to go watch something in there. I'm like, okay. Well, what's special about Montez is that she is somehow both the biggest hater of most things in the world and yet, you know, also gives five stars to everything. Like, it's, she's one of two <laughs> very distinct polar opposites. So... Um, she's, her, you know, Kieran is kind of, is half, he's, I guess he's both sides. He could, could chow on the one side yeah. and that's no good on the other side. Yep. I have a question for both of you. Please. So we, we find out early on that Brian has been coming to Toretto's Market Cafe, which Montez had questions about before, for three weeks, right? You've been coming here for three weeks, getting the tuna, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Do we think that the cops would give him three weeks to ingratiate himself, not even with Dom. Like, his gambit here is, I'm going to work my way in through the sister, who I'm just also now in love with. But it feels like this is the slowest of slow burns, and I'm wondering if you think that's a believable undercover story. I And timeline, more specifically. I do, because although they think it might be Dom, he's not infiltrating just Dom's crew. He's infiltrating the race scene. You know, at some points he thinks it's Hector, at some points he thinks it's Dom. So I think they are going to give him time to work at Harry's, see who comes in consistently, see what they're buying, things like that, develop new leads, get into the scene, and make, like, you know, a little bit of rep for himself. 
so that people start to trust him, which seems to be doing, like, he does have success in that, in the sense that, like, Hector eventually, like, can fight, like, trusts him, Dom does, he's, like, he gets around in that, in that world, so I, I don't think, like, him specifically infiltrating Dom's crew, he's going slow, but at the same time, I don't think that that's the goal that the cops had specifically. So they're just like, get into the racing scene. So his idea in is like, because he, he seems like, and uh, you know, we don't have the exact timeline, but it sounds like he just started at Harry's like that week, because based on the way he has a conversation with Dom. But like, he's just like, hey, I'm a new guy in town. I'm just checking out the sandwich place. I'm just going to get a sandwich here. Oh, it's a cute waitress. Whatever. I'm looking for a job. Oh, here's a job. So it's just like the whole like natural evolution. But then there's also no. it's no... a setup, though. It's not even like a natural evolution because like the cops are looking at Dom. They, they always think it was Toretto. So, like, him starting to go to Toretto's cafe, he's just, like, scoping it out. And, you know, you've been here, you've come in here for three weeks. That doesn't mean that he's there every day. Like, you know, he's probably been there once a week or maybe twice a week for three weeks. So that's probably, like, the sixth to tenth time she's seen him. Tenth being a super max. And because he's new, he's also working at Harry's. And then that will help get him in with Dom because they know that Dom's buying parts from Harry. It's just funny to me that, like, they're, they're, he's their only guy on the inside here, right? Like, we talked about in the minute a little while ago about how much pressure there is on Brian and Roman, even though they already have Monica Fuentes in there, they have the gardener, whatever, yes, right? Yes, yes, But here, it feels like it's just recon from afar and Brian, and that's it. And all he's doing is sitting at this cafe eating tuna sandwiches for every day for three weeks. It's just like, guy, like, I don't know if this is the best use of your time. Like, I get it, but also... It probably is, you know, because, like, you, you can listen, you can see who comes in and sees Dom. I think it's, like, a really good, low-key way to, like, spy on them. And he, and Dom is perceiving it, like he does in the movie, that, like, this dude's just here to flirt with my sister. My sister's cute. He keeps coming in because he likes my sister. Not even realizing that the actual goal was for him to get close to Dom. He is getting close to Dom, but also Dom doesn't know Brian's name until this movie, right? So, like, it's been three weeks and he's even, like, ostensibly had, had a conversation with Dom. No, he hasn't, but, like, he's been observing him. Sure. And, like, his goal... Also, Brian sucks as a cop. Let's keep that on, the, on the level, right? Absolutely like, he's a fair. bad cop. I think that the plan is is actually smarter than it seems. I think that there was a deeper plan. I'm, like, obviously I'm making all this up, but... Sure. It's a smarter plan for it to go this way, so it's not as apparent that, like, if he was like, hey, my name's Brian, what's your name? I want to be your best friend. Then this dude would be like, get the fuck out of here. Like, what are you doing? Like, this is weird, and why are you here? But if he comes in and just, like, doesn't really say anything, flirts with his sister a little bit, and orders a sandwich, you're going to be like, okay, I recognize this dude. And you're going to eventually be like, okay, he didn't do anything weird yet. Fine. Did either of you see the major motion picture Old by M. Night Shyamalan? Yeah. I don't know what you've been told, but there's a beach that makes you old. Yeah, but have you seen the movie? Yes, I have, in theaters. Because <laughs> the way you said, hi, I'm Ryan, made me think of the little kid in that movie. It's like, hi, my name's Billy or whatever. What's your name and occupation? It's just like, because they have to do so much plot dumping very early yes, before they yes. get to the crazy beach. But it's just like, he goes up to everyone in the movie like, hi, what is your name and occupation? Well, I'm Dennis and I'm a doctor. Yeah, like, my name's Mary and I'm a model. Yes, yeah. It is a really so, lame cop out, yeah. It just felt like you're like, hi, I'm Brian. I'm new to town. I'm a racer. What's your name? What do you do? Yeah, I sell car parts for the car parts shop up the street. You know Harry? I know Harry. I work for Harry. He signs my paychecks. <laughs> exactly. You want to be friends? <laughs> Montez, what do you think about this police plan? Is it a good plan or a bad plan? I feel like Joe 2's given Brian way too much credit because he is such a trash cop. I feel okay. like his, I feel like his original plan was probably like, let me just go in here and be like, hey, I'm Brian. You want to be friends? <laughs> okay, and the cops are like, wait, wait, wait. And they're wait, like, wait. hold on, guy. That's not gonna work here. And he's like, oh, okay. And then I feel like none of this was his idea. Uh, I don't think he's that smart. I don't, yeah, no, I didn't give him credit for it. I think it's the cops' plan that, he, that yeah. they sent him in to execute. I yeah. agree. I, yeah, I think his plan was, let me just go in there. I look like the kind of guy who would just be like, hey, let's be best buds. And he's going to be like, oh, cool, sweet. I made these friendship bracelets. Let's go hang out. Yeah. By the way, I also race cars. Oh, my gosh, me too. I feel like he thought in his head maybe it was going to go that way. And another thing about this is is that he brings the Harry's truck there. So, like, yeah. 
So it's, like, very apparent that he's, like, I'm here all the time. And, like, uh, you can see the parts truck of the store that you know. He's wearing to, like, the, the band, the shirt of the band that he's going to see. Exactly, yes. What's funny about that I, I'm sure I've noticed, we might have even talked about it, but I, don't rem I didn't remember. We might not have talked about it, but when they all get to the cafe and Vince is talking about, like, you know, that's why you're coming out in third or whatever, and then he grabs Jesse's head and swivels his head to look at the truck, it's just like, Jesse's not the guy who's going to do anything about this. Like, he should be like, yo, Leon, look who it is, or whatever. He just grabs Jesse's head and turns. It's like, Jesse is not your friend here, because inside, Jesse's like, oh, he's beautiful. I like his yeah. hair, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. on Team Brian, basically, but Vince is like, yo, Jesse, look at it. Just like, eh, he's not, all right, cool, but is it is guy. it more of like a, um, and I can't think of their names, and yes, I'm making another cartoon reference, the old Looney Tunes, where it's like the big dog and the little dog, and like, yes. the little dog is the smarter one. Jesse's the smarter one, so maybe he's looking at the truck to, because he's the one that can read. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> Jesse, what's, what's that truck say? What's those words on that door say? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I like that. I, I would like to re-see this movie imagining that Vince can't read in it. I think that it totally changes the dynamic of what's happening. I mean, it, tr it tracks. Like then, like the whole popcorn thing, like he like he doesn't know how long to put it in for because he can't read the bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. another thought that I never thought that I had before, but that's that's really awesome. Yeah, looks like you got all the help you need. Like he calls Vince over because he like wants to <laughs> teach him how to read, and he's like, "You got all the help you need, brother." <laughs> Another thing I never really thought of, and I think it's just because the, the I, have, I have not been right in the last 10 days since this happened, but I thought at the end, when Johnny Tran crashes and dies, that the big mural over him was the queen. I'm like, is that the queen? Uh, it's not the queen. But like, it's just like an old lady with like kind of whitish blonde, like whatever hair. I'm just like, is that the queen? If you would have told me yes in my head after seeing this movie so many times and finding that bridge and seeing all those people's murals on the underneath it... I would have believed it was the Queen. Yeah, it's Queen and Prince and Stevie Wonder and, you know, B. Arthur and, yeah, it's all those people. No, it's yeah, just like old totally ladies. Yeah, totally fine. It, I would have absolutely believed you. Montez, is there anything about this movie you did not like? Things that you're like, this is dumb, this is bad, this is stupid, I don't like this. I mean, I didn't like it then, I still don't like it now, but just the way that the females in this movie were portrayed just really irritates me. It, and it did back when I first originally saw this movie as well. Probably because I've never been that type of girl, so it's always been like... What type of girl? Like, I would never walk up to someone and just, like, <laughs> whip my boob out and be like, you can have this. So specifically, like, the extras? Because yeah, like, so like, badass. Just, yeah, no, no, not, not Letty, not Mia. So, like, no one that's... Yes, so just the extras. Like, the way the extras are portrayed, like, the extras that do say things... I've just, I never, I didn't like it then. It just, I don't know. It looks, it feels, it feels weak to me. And I oh, guess okay. that's, I guess that's more of me being a Letty. Uh, it's because yeah. those skanks are weak. Because you smell skanks, yeah. <laughs> you know, I do think that in terms of the women in this movie, there's a line that I'm sure we've talked about before, but Mia, when they're at dinner and... He's, she's she's talking, she's like, she's showing her insecurity about like, oh, I know you're only going out because of my brother or whatever. And he's like, no, like, I'm here for you. He's just a bonus. And she says, it's nice to come first every once in a while. And I know that that's talking about how like in this specific situation, someone wants to be with her as opposed to like, I'm sure she's dated a lot of dudes or hung out with a lot of dudes who just want to be friends with Dom. They're like, oh yeah, her, also his sister's hot and I want to bang her or whatever, right? But like here, Brian seems to be genuinely interested in her, which is cool. But I also think, given like what we know about Dom, that Dom probably never let her win anything growing up and she was always like second in everything and just being first. Like I thought that that was a lot of like, and I'm probably reading way too far into this, but no. I thought there was a lot of nuance into the Mia, like it's nice to come first every once in a while. I like that um, I'm a strong proponent of, like, you shouldn't let children win things. If I'm playing a game with a kid, I'm going to demolish them in every game that I can. That's because, real life. Like, exactly. And you're like, get better. Go practice. Play your friends. Come back. We'll do this again. <laughs> and when you win, like, because I know the feeling that, like, you get when you finally beat a game, a person, any of these things is so much greater like when you when you worked at it right 
So I think that that's a way more important lesson than being like, oh, I'll let you win this game, which is like, I don't know, I, I'm projecting and talking about my own life. Like, I have a much younger sister, and whenever we play games like this, I would just, like, just crush her in, like, Candyland, whatever we're playing, right? And, like, my dad would always get so mad that, like, I wouldn't let her win. And I'm like, why would you let her win? Like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, that that doesn't seem like how this should go. It, it's just, like, a weird situation. I, I don't know. Nobody ever let me win as a kid, and I think that it made me better because, like, when you finally get to the end, you're like, fuck yes, I did this myself. I won. This so was you're awesome. a Mia who finally got her Brian. Who is my Brian in this situation? I have no idea. I have no <laughs> idea. Something. You eventually won something. I, yeah, I did, I guess. From that perspective, I can see Dom being a parental figure feeling the same way, Joey. So like that was just a roundabout way to be like, I agree with you. I don't think Dom was ever like letting Mia win at Gran Turismo or something, right? Yeah. Because we know that he never loses anything. Ever. We've never seen him lose a race. That he didn't, like, fuck off himself, right? Like, the worst moment of driving we've ever seen him do is in this movie when, at the end, he looks at Brian because he's in love with Brian, and he flips his car because he hits the truck. Like, that's the only time we've ever seen him, like, not in complete control of his, of his situation and surroundings. Yeah, but Brian is very distracting. He's beautiful. <laughs> uh, other things that you either love or hate about this movie, Montez? I love the uh, ridiculousness of the background. So everything happened in the background. So alternatively to disliking the way the female extras are, I also love how ridiculous the female and male extras are. If you pay really close attention during the rave scene, the dance moves for everyone are exactly the same. They're just a mm -hmm. little off filter a bit so like everyone's doing the exact same move we talk about this a lot though you have to remember that like they're all dancing to silence yeah it's it's so wonderful to watch uh the in the glow sticks just that guy was going hard at it um, Yeah. what did you think of the uh the post credit scene because i sort of i i it sounded like a joke and i clarified in text that it wasn't a joke yeah. but there is a post credit scene in this movie with Dom in Mexico doing a little bit of voiceover, but did you ever, have you ever seen that scene before? Did you know that existed, and what do you think of it? Uh, I had never seen it before. I didn't know it existed, and I felt like it was just a small moment of zen at the end of some chaos as he rode off into the sunset. Yeah, it's a good perspective. I like that a lot. You're right, because there is like a lot of chaos, a lot to unpack there, and it kind of like... The movie ends kind of abruptly, right? So, like, and you go straight to credits. So, like, yes, there's, like, the confirmation that, like, Dom's okay, and it's, like, it slows down. There's, like, the, the sultry voiceover. Very zen. I agree. I don't think there's anything about this movie that I hated. I think it was well, good. I, I think that I forgot about uh, Vince playing the guitar, which I thought was absolutely absurd. <laughs> His Zach Wilde just that wow, wow, wow. Yeah, like, wow. Like, 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 dude, what are you doing? Yeah, I think just watching it again, I'm like, this stuff is, it's, it was just funny to me because I'm like, I'm sure, God, what, 21 years ago? Yeah. Fuck. 21 years ago, I probably thought, like, everything happening in this movie was super cool. Well, you were right, because everything happening in this movie is super cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, back then, it was like, it was like groundbreaking. I like the perspective that you, like, when was the last time you saw this movie, Montez? Uh, I think I watched it last year. Okay. Oh, I, I tried to, okay, I take that back. I tried to watch this last year with my dude, and he wasn't into it because there wasn't enough racing. Okay. So I should have started it, like, in the middle where there were more cars. There was Makes too much, sense. there were too many people and too much talking at the beginning. He wasn't into it, so. And the thing is, like, there's, there's more racing in this movie than most other movies. Yeah. Does he like action in general? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he also it does. He's like a goldfish right now, so stuff only takes his attention for like, I don't know, maybe five minutes, and then he's off doing something else. Gotcha. Have you shown him Legend yet? Your favorite film? I am not gonna let him shit on that movie right now. <laughs> so maybe when he's older. Mom, this isn't good. <laughs> this is not good. Yeah, I'm not gonna let him shit on my dreams. Okay. I'll good let sir. the I'll let the smallest one watch it because he can't say anything. It's a good I'm, way to play it. Good way to play it. Yeah. But the big news of the day is that you you got your older son a little bit of a little something today. Yes. So he keeps going into the smallest one's room 
and going, Mom, I got to go get my race car shirt. And I'm like, listen, bud, that's not going to fit you. It's too small. That's your brother's shirt. And he just looks at me and he's like, oh, okay. And he's like super deflated. So today I realize I need to get the man his own shirt. So he is getting his own Too Fast, Too Forever shirt that he will then be a walking billboard for the podcast at <sighs> school. That is, and you're going to send him to school in it? Yeah. That's awesome. That that makes me really, really happy. Beautiful. I hope his teacher tries, I hope his teacher, like, asks him <laughs> what it is and then listens to an episode and it's just <laughs> chaos. It's like a Brian episode or like Cali the Caligula oh, episode. Oh, God. <laughs> well, luckily, I think that's behind the paywall, I think. It I would think be funny so, if you're, too. If, you're, if his teacher became a patron, just like, let me listen to this oh, cook thief shit. wife lover, Jessica. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, that would be real weird for me, but I'm into it. More patrons for you. Well, the idea is that, like, I mean, like, we we say your name, but like, you're we unless if you if she like tunes out at the name, we just call you Montez like ninety five percent of the time. So yeah. like, there's no and there's that's not even like a thing about you in any way. <laughs> no. So like, there's there's almost no recognizable features <laughs> very, between very you true. and what we call you on the show. Yeah, it's okay if they did though. I'm not embarrassed. Other than your voice and the name of your son and the fact that you're, he's wearing this shirt and all these like very specific identifiable <laughs> features, but not your name. Yeah, it's fine. I'm not embarrassed. Uh, do you have any other thoughts, any other notes, any other things to say about this movie before we play a couple games? I don't. I Like I said, I'm just really excited to continue on this journey with you guys now that I have this new refreshed outlook on the franchise. I like this positivity. You're coming in warm, you know, which is is nice. That's a good place to start. I'm trying to be real positive. I hadn't ha I haven't had any food in four days. Uh, maybe you're just delirious. Maybe I am. I'm dehydrated. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's gonna be great. I, you know, if I still feel like this next week, as far as my positivity, then we're all on the right track, and we're not gonna crash, and everything's gonna be fine. I love it. And you've seen the second one, right? You've seen the first, like, six or whatever. You've for sure seen the second one. Do you remember the second one? Um, yes. And when I mentioned to my cousin, so I'm going to see him tomorrow. Okay. And he was asking me what order we were watching these in. And I said, I think, I'm pretty sure we're watching them in universe order. And he goes, damn it. That means we have to watch the second one together. Oh, well, I mean, the second one would be second anyway. We would only yeah. just skip. We would just, you know three before four instead of three after six so i don't remember the second one very much um but based on his reaction i shouldn't be excited about it well we're also not doing the second one for three weeks so like it's not like you have homework for next week so you don't yeah. have to watch that one together it's not gonna be for three weeks but i could also force him to do it i mean yeah, listen could. i'm gonna drink a bottle of wine or two or three because i won't have small children to take care of and i might watch I might watch multiples. I, who knows? Oh, that sounds fun. I like that. Who knows? With a buddy, a little buzzed yeah. up. I See? think that uh, to even if even if you're watching it with someone who is a quote hater of it, I think that you guys would have a good time. Not to you know shit on too because I do love all these movies, but watching this one and like breaking down the second one minute by minute, like. It is kind of like in every way the this movie is better. Like it's just it's more the first fun. one. Yeah. yeah. Like I there's agree. stuff to love to really genuinely love about the second one that's not in this one, but like All right, wait. minute by minute I'm like I'm like, why do I have this one so much more memorized? It's like, oh, because I enjoyed watching it minute by minute more. Like because two kind of feels like a slog when you go by minute, right? Like it still breezes by overall. But By there's the way, so much more to break down in this one that I loved watching it. Now that you brought up the minute, Joey Joey sent me a message today that was calculating like time we spend mm -hmm. watching these movies. I don't remember like I read it obviously, but I don't remember uh, Goldfish Brain. Did you add in the minute? No. Okay, so then it was it was specifically watching the feature films in the core franchise. So that's not talking about it. That's not me editing. No. That's not doing any social media. That's not doing anything else. But I think the else. minute counts. And imagine that, like, how many times, okay. So you, well, so I think it's probably the first movie an extra 10 times. So it's an extra, you know, like, 15 or so hours or, or you know, 18 hours or whatever. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's insane. That's absolutely but the, insane. The math we figured out, Montez and listener, is over the last five years, like, we, the first episode was on December 1st of 2017, 
roughly 10 full days, like 240 hours, have been spent watching just these movies. Also, not the pit stops, not the minute, not recording, not any Nothing. of that. Just watching the 10 Fast and Furious movies. That's it. And that's not including the times that it's on TBS that or like TNT, whatever fucking channel, USA, yeah. that I'll just be like, oh, the first one's on and just like put it on. Or like when we watched them for family movie night with yep. the like that's not including those either so like it's an unfathomable amount of time that we've spent watching these movies and all, all you out there listening it's even more time it's just it's you know yeah thank you i guess but also what are what are any of us doing i have no idea i really don't know joe any other thoughts anything else you want to sneak in or you got everything in i got everything in bud then let's play this ain't no 10 second race aka boy do we have a podcast for you boy do we have a podcast for you come and check out our show yeah yeah this is where i go on twitter.com aka the bird app and find tweets from people who don't follow too fast and try to get them to watch or listen to too fast by tweeting at them and i will say without spoiling because the, the real spoiler here is if it's stuck joe and i each got points for sure on the last episode but montez two times ago joe and i both were like oh cool we got points and then when we checked it last time neither of us had points oh no but i know definitively when we play with nate joe and i both got points that night so we're gonna see if it still sticks because otherwise something weird is going on let's look back at the episode with nate for f9 i found at ff underscore countdown fast and furious fast x is only eight months and 10 days away Hashtag Fast and Furious, hashtag Fast X, hashtag Fast 10. We said we can't wait. When do you think we'll get a trailer? Also, boy, do we have a podcast for you. And Fast and Furious responded, just said, first trailer should be dropping in December or at February at the latest. So five points. Okay. Not bad. Not that's bad. A, that's, that's a big come up. That is. But go ahead, hit them. Joe, you found... L. Lowe, a.k.a. Christopher Tracy, at Heir to the Prince, finally watching the last Fast and Furious movie, F9 might be my favorite. Dom being a dad is amazing to watch. We said, don't forget Letty is a mom too. Boy, do we have a podcast for you. And you got a like and a retweet, so you get three points. Thank you, sir. And we got a follow too. From that person? Yes. We don't have a point system for follows. What do you What do you think we should get for follow? Five? I, I think that's fair. I, I was even going to concede at this time because we didn't have any established rules that I should get at least one bonus point. If we set it to five, that's fine by me. I think you get five. Well, I Because the, the scoring it. system is one for a like, two for a retweet, five for a reply, ten for an email. Yes. Yeah. Email is a big deal. And I think I think a follow is on par with a reply. Thank you. So Joe's up to 76. I'm at 51 and a half. I can just punch in these zero zero for Alyssa and for Kate because they got zero. And our guest last time, Nate Milton, found a rich Mexican flag, Dominican flag, I think. Two emojis. Like, they're too small for me to tell. I also don't know flags. I don't know why I'm making excuses. I just don't know flags. At rich underscore LB fan wait dot dot dot. John Cena was in F9. We said we didn't see him either. Boy, do we have <laughs> yeah. a podcast for you. And unfortunately, Mr. Nate Milton did not get any points. Swing and a miss there. Mm. But Montez, you found a great tweet. Can you please hit us with it and then tell us how you want us to respond to that tweet? Yeah, so it is a picture of a Hot Wheel. Mm -hmm. I'm, okay. I'm going to try and keep with the... Uh, mm -hmm. And it just says in all caps... No one likes the tuna here. Oh. I also do like that somebody responded, just said, hey, man, he was in my face. That was what, <laughs> that was what sold it for me. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so really what we'll awesome. do is I'm going to retweet and like the original one. I'm going to like the reply, and I'm going to reply to the reply. And Montez, how do you want to customize it? What do you want to say to both Brendan McAleer and the Bob man? You should say, boy, do we have a podcast for you. And then at the end, you should just put no crust. Oh, okay. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I like that, Montez. We so, so rarely ever 
do the boy first, but I like that. I think I think it works really nicely. It works really, really well. Well played. I like that too. Fresh out of the gate here. Fingers crossed for you, lady. Joe, hit us with yours, please. Mine is appropriately from Monica at Pink Jackets with two A's. She she says, I'm a big enthusiast of the Fast and the Furious franchise, but I was today years old when I watched the original Fast and Furious movie. I'm just mind blown by this. I, I don't know. I want to know, like, what took you so long? What was the first one you saw? I have Welcome a lot of questions. Family. What do you think we should go with to entice? I, I need a little help here. Usually I have, like, something down. It was like, where, how, where did you start? And boy, do we have a podcast for you now that you're part of the family. I'm just saying we have a lot of questions. We'll start with, which one did you start with? Boy, do we have a podcast for you. Perfect. I like that. Well played. Thank you for helping. I appreciate it. Monica. Ooh, now the link works. Who knows? Now this one I found is kind of special. Okay. So we got Rudy. Uh, he's, he's got like a deer, like a reindeer emoji in there. His, his profile picture is Paddington holding a can of Miller Lite. Um, at Covey's Burner on Twitter. It's funny to think about how much Snapple paid for Brian to go get Mia a drink and come back with an iced tea in the Fast and the Furious in the picture of Mia drinking the Snapple. And then Rudy responds to his own tweet and says, I have so many questions. What happened to Leon? Why did he just call Vince Coyotes R Us? Like, what does that even mean? Did I Google Coyotes R Us? I absolutely did. And then I found like a bunch of people like calling like Governor, Governor Newsom in California Coyotes R Us for whatever reason, what? maybe from this movie. I don't know, because there's coyotes in California. What? Then I was like, okay, Coyotes R Us Vince. And I found this one from Rudy from March. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to like and retweet this. I also want to know why is he calling him Pumpkin? Like, if there's there's a lot of nicknames too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have no idea. We miss Leon too. Another question: Why is he called Vince Pumpkin? I mean, Pumpkin's a normal thing, but Coyotes R Us makes no sense in the world. Um, but I do love that because the Snapple thing never comes back. Like that was clearly product placement, but just like, okay. Yeah, it, it the the Snapple thing does freak me out. All right, Montez, we've got one more game to play, and you have to pick which side you're on. It's called Dude, What's My Car? Dude, what's my car? What's your car, dude? So I think because you are a car person, you might be on Joe's team here, but this is where I describe a car that a listener sent in an email about, and Joe tries to guess it based on my descriptions alone. Do you want to help oh, me fun, give fun, clues? Fun, 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 Or do you want to help Joe try to guess the car? I feel like this is a lot. The game is impossibly hard either way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do really bad at it. So, like, if you want to, I, I would appreciate the help. D no pressure all right. at all. And I'll if you him. don't want to, that's fine. Also, totally acceptable. But the game is impossible. So, it, there's not much expected from you. Trust all me. All right. We're phoning a friend. I'm going to help him. Okay. You're going to help Joe. Yeah. So this one's from Jerry, sent in last July. He says, I'm playing Forza 4, and the views kick the absolute shit out of Need for Speed. Well, Forza 5 is out. There's a whole new game since then, because he emailed us in, you know, yeah. 15 months ago. But sorry, Jerry. But here we are back at this. So this car is British. It is also green, and it is from the 60s. Jaguar. No. Really? Okay. I need to see if this company is affiliated with Jaguar. Hold on. No, it's mm, 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 mm. it's owned by a different company. Divisions. No, Jaguar is a totally different company. Okay. It's a two-door sedan with a a short little boot in the back and a sort of, I guess, a normal hood length in the front. But because it is a short boot in the back, the, the front looks enormously long. It looks like there's a back seat, but I don't know. Okay. The headlights look like eyeballs, kind of in the Herbie fully loaded type of thing. Is it an Aston Martin? No. Did you watch that clip that I retweeted of Siskel and Ebert talking about Herbie? And I think it was Ebert saying, like, how do they have sex? How does Herbie have sex? And, and Siskel's just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> Feels very on brand for us. Inside, leather seats, sort of bl uh, black leather seats, black everything, all black everything inside. Um, black sort of fabric cloth on the floor and in the, on the console and everything like that. Okay. Um, doesn't look very roomy. Two seater, two. Well, there's probably, possibly, I think a back seat, but it's a two door for sure. Okay. An okay. Impala? No, it's a Brit. Uh, Impala oh, British. Heavy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, British. British. Sixties. It's from the sixties. Green, black leather, everything. Mm -hmm. Eyeball, roundy eyeball light headlights. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
It is a two-door sports car manufactured and marketed from 62 until 80. Okay. So it had a run. It had a run there. It had a run. Four-cylinder soft top sports car announced and details first published in 62. There's a couple different variants of it. Uh, Started as a prototype with the Abingdon code name. Abingdon code name. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of different things. Do you want to ask questions? I forgot how hard this game is. So we haven't played this game in so long. It's not an ass and it's not a... Uh, what other... See, the green thing threw me off because a lot of the Jags are green. I will say it's a, it's a manufacturer that I've heard of. Okay, and I that's don't good. think just because of the car video games. I think it's mostly. I think it's. I think it's a pretty big manufacturer, especially for this era. I don't. I don't know that the company's still around. Interesting. Okay, that's a good. That's a good clue. Oh no, it's still. I think it actually still might be around. No, yeah, they're still making cars uh, to the present. Okay. Sort of successors to this. Interesting. Okay. Is it a Lotus? Nope. The grill is vertical piping in the front. Um, chrome bumper, chrome grill surrounder. This is not a soft top car. This is a hard top, hard shell. I guess there's a variant that has the soft top. Okay. The one, the picture on the inside. So Jerry sent two pictures, one on the outside, one on the inside. The one from the outside, the driver's seat is obviously on the right in like the British style. But the yeah, other yeah. one he sent has the steering wheel on the left. So maybe they made an American variant or something. I don't know. Yeah, probably. It, do you... Have you ever seen one of this manufacturer's cars in real life in America? Oh, I have absolutely no idea. Probably not. Because you I said you recognize know. the name. So, like, okay, so it's not, like, that huge. The MSRP of a current car that this company makes is 24390 So it's not, like, a wildly expensive sporty car. Oh, weird. Okay, so that's, like, a normal car price. Yeah. Or six hundred forty nine thousand bot, B A H T. If you want to, if you want to buy it in bot. Okay. What's who's the manufacturer? Can you tell me that? It's an M G. Oh fuck! I guess M G every fucking time, <laughs> and this is the only time that I don't guess M G. God damn it! Uh, what was the big M G name in the sixties? Uh, like, was it just like a roadster or something? No, nope. it's just a bunch of letters. It is. Mm hmm. I don't know the letters. What are they? It's the MG, MGB, GT. The 1966 MGB, MG, MGB GT. I'm going to send this to both of you on God Twitter damn it, that's right so now. frustrating that I, I would guess MG every time we would talk about it. The green really threw me off, and then I got stuck in Jaguar land, so. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't get off Jaguar either. Jaguar. Oh, excuse me, Jaguar. Oh, uh, that's like another weird Pittsburgh thing, like... I I say Jaguar, as in J-A-G-W-I-R-E. Like, that's the pronunciation of what that word is. Jaguar. Jaguar. <laughs> yeah. These things are really cool. I think this would be um, a really fun car to drive. When I was in high school, um, one of my teachers had bought one to restore, and the joke was that he, like, went to take the door off and then never did anything else about it and his wife would his wife who also worked at my school would just like bitch about him having this car in the garage that's just like with one part off of it and him not doing anything to it yeah i mean that sounds like a car guy thing to do does sounds like an old guy thing to do right like that's pretty on brand and i'm sure you just saw as you went to see the notification on your own twitter that rudy my boy rudy liked my tweet so i'm gonna get a point next time so oh, shout nice. out to me Excellent, excellent share, Jerry. That one shouldn't have been as hard as we made it. I like it in green. It's a beautiful car. Yeah, Jerry says it's a MG, MGP, GT. Say that five times fast, LOL. Manufacturer MG, location Britain. Hey, guys, here's a good one. So thank you, Jerry. Yeah, thank you, buddy. It only took us 15 months, but, you know, now hey, that the here, anything goes. Yeah, we're back at it. We're No worries. We have four more. We have one from Jerry, one from Jake. Lane and Jason all sent ones in, so cool. shout out to all of them. And we'll they're coming get there up soon enough. Yeah. yeah, but Montez, thank you so much for joining us for this episode and to kick off in earnest this lap. Yes, absolutely. So excited to be here. Is there something in particular that you're looking forward to for the second movie? Now that we're talking about the second movie, is the second one where one of the characters just keeps talking about how hungry he is? Yes. Oh my god. 
<laughs> I mean, so like, good, honestly, oh my god, or a bad, oh my god, like it's bad. But also, like right now, I can relate because I would love to to eat something. Well, we are done here. You can go eat whatever you want. Food all over the place. Montez in your house. <laughs> Uh, what would you like to plug? You sort of tease. I think you said your handle, your Twitter handle wrong last time, but you're quote tweeting or tagging you. People, if they want to follow you on Twitter, they can follow you on Twitter. Yeah. Anything else you want to plug? Um, no. I'm cool. bo- I'm pretty boring right now. Everything everything in my life's on hold as I try to uh, get back into the swing of being a functional adult. Well, you have two little ones who literally rely on you to live. Yeah. A husband who probably at least partially relies on you to Definitely live because fully relies men are just... On you unable yep. to do anything and then yeah. also just like dumbass employees oh uh, well yeah and then i got two dogs one of which it's his birthday today happy third birthday to my dog happy, happy birthday, birthday mando <laughs> joe next week our pit stop our first pit stop in this lap is one of your favorite vin diesel movies boiler room spoiler alert we already recorded that it was a really fun episode i think I will say that you're like, oh, Vin has hair in that movie, uh, in this movie, in terms of Boiler Room, and he kind of has hair in this one, too. It's just like, you know, it's a tight shave. He's not, he's not like razor shaving. He's just regular buzzing. He's got a little bit of hair in this one, too. So I think they're about on par hair-wise from this to that. Fair. That's fair. Good assessment. And we record that out of order because I am traveling next week, which we'll talk about on the Life in the Fast Lane episode in two weeks. Ooh. But next week, our first pit stop of the lap, Boiler Room, Joe's... One of Joe's favorite Vin Diesel movies. One so, of my favorite movies in that. general. I fucking love that movie. Actually, I saw somebody... It's weird. We were talking... like, So we talked about it. And I saw somebody talking about Fight Club today. Oh, well, John John was quote tweeting Fight Club tweets really? on 1999 The Podcast. Maybe it was that... Okay. So, something about Fight Club. And they were talking about how like people like missed the point of Fight Club. And somebody mm-hmm. was like, yeah, you know what other movies people missed the point of? Wall Street, Glengarry, Glenn Ross... Boiler Room, and um, The Wolf of Wall Street. And I was like, well, this is very appropriate for our episode next week. So, And the thing that shares all those in common, or the, the, the thing that, ha- that all those have in common, is that they're marketed toward boys who are like, this is so cool. And, and it's really just, just like, like satire about how are shitty. dumb. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because we can all agree on that, right? Boys are dumb. That's fine by me, man. Hey, Montez. man, Rachel wasn't here for, <laughs> yeah. like, for like three days, and like I barely could feed myself yeah, like, your cat's no longer eating she yeah. goes away the cat stops eating no i stopped eating man like i could barely feed myself and the cat has an automatic feeder so yeah. <laughs> well thank you once again montez for joining us and for all things too fast too forever go to cageclub.me facebook.com slash too fast too forever or at too fast too forever on twitter and instagram email us family at cageclub.me check out our patreon page like Montez does at too fast to forever.com on our store like Montez does at too fast to forever.shop and come back next week for boiler room. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe too. And that was Jessica Collins, AKA Montez. Montez. And we'll tell you all about it when we see you again. <laughs> <laughs>